You're watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. A dog is getting love from an Ozarks community and from thousands of miles away. Good evening, I'm Ashley Katz. And hello once again, I'm David Oliver. Good to have you along. We're talking about Phineas tonight. If you don't recall this story, here's a quick refresher for you. In June, Salem police took a report of a dog bite. The mayor there says he found out about two other dog bites with the same dog. He ordered that the dog named Phineas be put down. Now Phineas is living at a local veterinary clinic, and for now, Phineas's future is tied up in court. And tonight, new at 10, Kevin Schwaller went to Salem as the dog's owner made an appeal to the city. And this is Phineas here at the Dent County Veterinary Clinic. This is where Phineas is living now, and it's been nearly a year since he's been back to his owner's home. Oh yeah, he's healthy. A healthy dog like <laughs> any other to veterinarian J.J. Uh, Toon. He's kind of a celebrity. I think more on Facebook than anywhere. This dog, though, comes with a following. Dangerous? Toon says no. No, he's just, he's just a pet. Breaks our hearts every time we gotta leave, you know, just. He, he points his nose at the door. He wants to go with us. That's Phineas's owner, Patrick Sanders. Right now, an attorney is appealing the order to put down Phineas. Sanders believes the city can still reverse its decision. Basically saying that they say they can't overrule the judgment of the court when that right there says that they pretty much can. And Phineas also has friends claiming to be from as far as Australia. These items all came in the mail today for him. All today? Just today. And most of it with no return address. It'd be nice if we could send a thank you note, but uh, we don't know. And the Save Phineas Facebook page has more than 128,000 likes. Reporting from Salem, Missouri, I'm Kevin Schwaller. All right, Kevin, thanks. By the way, we did try to talk to Salem Mayor Gary Brown, but we were referred to the city attorney on this story. The attorney said Salem leaders will not comment on pending litigation. Also tonight, the Missouri Court of Appeals, we have learned, could make a decision on Phineas's future. Lindsay Day is in the weather lab tonight with our Ozarks First forecast. Lindsay. Hey, yeah, another warm and muggy day, and we actually did see a little bit of rainfall earlier today, but now we are not dealing with that rain. As a matter of fact, I think most of us are in the clear for the remainder of this evening, and we'll actually start clear tomorrow as well. Today, our highs shot up above 80 almost everywhere across the Ozarks. Rolla stayed in the upper 70s, but it was a warm day. Our average temperature for this time of the year is 78. So, yes, we are seeing slightly warmer temperatures than we should be seeing for this time of the year. Winds were also another issue. It was a breezy day today and it will be a breezy day tomorrow all the way through the day. Warmth coming back for us by the afternoon will top out in the low to mid 80s. So get ready for those warm temperatures. They're coming back for us and they're actually staying in the forecast for a little bit. I'll have your full seven day coming up. Stick around. Thanks, Lindsay. New at 10, consumer confidence in the housing market is on the rise. That means homes are selling faster and for higher prices. Color 10's Laura Kennedy shows us how this move to a seller's market impacts real estate here in the Ozarks. Home prices saw their largest annual gains in six years. That's according to a widely watched housing index. Prices are up 10% over this time last year, back to pre-bubble rates. Local realtors say this is good news for those looking to sell. Theresa Gilmore listed her condo on the market three months ago. It was kind of slow starting out. But she's encouraged by a recent uptick in interested buyers. We've had a lot of showings in the last week or two. I mean, it's just like I had two or three over the weekend, and I had uh, one this morning, and I have one in the morning. Her realtor, Stacy Clem, says this is consistent with all of her listed properties. I had three contracts on a holiday weekend this weekend. That's not normal. Stacy has drastically fewer listings than this time last year, which she credits to the recent mm -hmm. transition to a seller's market. Sellers are, are still waiting for the prices to go up and get a better value um, in selling their house. The trend in the Ozarks reflects national numbers, increased consumer confidence, and higher housing prices. We're starting to see more buyers come out, uh, more confidence in the buyers making offers. She also says home renovations made during the slump will pay off during the seller's market. After she moved in, Theresa put in new appliances and granite countertops, and now that she's moving out, she's hoping those will increase the value of the home. People know to get their houses sold, they have to have them in the best condition and I think that translates 
to why we're seeing a better market also. National indices show the record low mortgage rates are edging up, which could be good news for sellers like Threesa and motivation for buyers to make an offer sooner than later. The optimistic stock market numbers don't just pertain to existing homes. Building permit requests have increased 14% from last month and up 35% from this time last year. Interesting numbers tonight, Laura. Thanks. Tomorrow, Congressman Billy Long is going to embark on his annual manufacturing tour with stops in Mount Vernon, Bolivar, and Springfield. And today, Long visited the Small Business and Technology Development Center over at Missouri State. That facility helps small business owners get ideas off the ground. And Long says the center has helped more than 600 small business owners over the years. So when you're starting out your small business, instead of renting a space and hiring a secretary and hiring all the help, they provide all that for you here. So it really lets you, lets you germinate and grow out of this building so you can take your business to new locations. And Billy Long, the congressman there, will also appear on Color 10 News at 5 tomorrow right here. Fire crews are expected to remain on the scene of this train derailment all night long. Take a look at the smoke. You can see it from miles away. It happened in Maryland. A freight train carrying chemicals collided with a truck. 15 freight cars were off the track. Several were carrying chemicals. Two caught fire. That explosion even shattered windows and even ripped walls off of a suburban Baltimore neighborhood. Families were warned to stay stay inside of the, as the fire raged. The truck driver was seriously hurt and is now hospitalized. Now to more local news. The Springfield Fire Department laid out its five-year plan today and it shows positive changes coming. The details were outlined during a city council lunch meeting. The department is using a community-based planning strategy that includes improvements to staffing, facilities, and equipment. The last strategic plan was created back in 2007. Fire Chief David David Hall says that things are looking up for the department after getting over some tough hurdles in the last five years. We've been able to uh, get all the stations opened again, obviously. We've been able to add some additional staffing working towards some of those things that were laid out on the 13th station, uh, as well as being able to get some of the equipment replaced that was pretty desperately needed. Chief Hall says he plans to continue to keep the momentum going the next five years. By now you've likely heard that uh, John Q. Hammonds has passed away, but we can say for everybody out there that his giving to our city will not be forgotten. The Hammonds name, of course, can be found on many buildings around Springfield. Color 10's Lindsay Klein explores tonight who might carry on that gift of giving. John Q's passing will leave a vacuum in the community, there's no doubt about it. We need to do things to enhance our culture. Uh, John Q. Hammonds did that. It's hard to not spot the Hammonds name if you're in the downtown Springfield area. I mean, go downtown and just see it, what, what the legacy he left there. The legacy John Q. Hammonds has left behind is irreplaceable. Just ask Care to Learn founder Doug Pitt. Trying to fill his shoes, that'd scare me to death. He's, uh, those are big shoes. and. I'm so grateful for what he's done for Springfield. I mean, just as a, a citizen here in our hometown, to be even in the same discussion as a John Q. Hammonds, that's, that'd be a great honor for anybody. Hammonds helped Doug with his very first project. He got me started, my first one. And he's one of the many, helping John Q. Hammonds' philanthropic legacy live on. I know what my sphere of influence can be, and I just want to maximize that to the best of ability, and that's, that's really the charge I would give anybody. His Care to Learn organization helps kids with health, hunger, and hygiene issues. He's not necessarily putting his name on a building, but he's making a difference in the community. And I, I think we're going to see more and more of that going forward. You know, I'm just fortunate the business was in a place that uh, it allowed me to give back. Uh, will there ever really be another John Q. Hammonds? Uh, we never know. Uh, there could be one waiting in the wings. So it's a sad day for many to think about John Q. here, but it can also be a great time of celebration when you just drive around our city and know the impact that he made here on a lot of families. Another family helping out, the O'Reillys. They have their name on a lot of buildings around town, like the O'Reilly Family Events Center at Drury, the O'Reilly Catholic Student Center at MSU, and the O'Reilly Cancer Center. Also, if you were driving around the Springfield Corridor today, you probably saw some people running along the highway. It is that time of year when our local law enforcement take to the streets for the statewide torch run for Special Olympics. We caught up with Springfield police officers as they were jogging with the officers from Republic. Police officers don't have to meet any physical requirements to take part. They do it for the kids. You have to have heart. You have to have heart 
the desire and the want to do this. Anyone can run. Uh, it just takes, you know, the desire to complete it. Officers will hand out medals to the Special Olympic athletes at the Summer Games in Columbia, which start Thursday. Easing chronic pain, that is the goal of a new device available here in the Ozarks. Yeah, it's called the Spinal Cord Stimulator. So we can stimulate more areas in the body that have chronic pain. In tonight's Family Matters report, the reasons this device can tackle pain in areas that others cannot. And if you haven't already found Color 10 on Facebook, it's easy to do. Look for the Facebook icon on OzarksFirst.com and go like our page. Tonight's Family Matters report here at 10. A new medical device here in the Ozarks makes the lives of people with chronic pain a little easier. Mercy is the first to offer the spinal cord stimulator. It's called Precision Spectra. The device is implanted near the spine and then it sends electrical impulses that create a tingling sensation that goes down the legs and across the back. The device that includes 32 contact points helps tackle pain in areas that older stimulators cannot. So we can stimulate more areas in the body that have chronic pain. We can get the back and the legs and the feet and, and other areas of the body, the hands and arms and so forth, with uh, stimulation. While the stimulator also helps ease pain from failed back surgery, it is covered by insurance and Medicare. It's been a little more than a week right now since that massive EF5 tornado touched down over in Moore, Oklahoma. Relief efforts are now turning to rebuilding efforts. First, organizations that helped the victims needed some money and or food and water, I should say. Now, money is most critical. It allows the Red Cross and folks like Convoy of Hope to buy gas for their trucks, cleaning supplies, and tools. The American Red Cross and other agencies can purchase the items that are needed. Um, they can purchase them in amounts that are not going to be overwhelming to warehousing and storage and things like that. All of the money given to the Red Cross goes to a general disaster relief fund, except for nine cents from every dollar, which is used for administrative costs. Lindsay Day is back, and we'll have now an update on your Ozarks First forecast tonight. 
That's right, a warm and windy day once again, and there's more where that came from tomorrow is going to be very similar to today, but we have some changes that are on the way by the end of our work week. We actually have some storms heading this way. I'll have your seven day coming up in just a little bit. Stick around. Welcome back. Maybe it was back to work for you after a long holiday weekend and you felt the warmth, you felt the windiness, and you felt the humidity out there. That is going to be lasting for the next couple of days, especially tomorrow. Right now we are still holding on to some warm temperatures, 72 degrees. It is going to be a rather warm night, mild evening, but good news is that we do not have to deal with that rainfall for tonight. Right now across the Ozarks, most of us still seeing some mid-70s, so a little bit above average, a little warmer than what we're used to for this time of the year. Still, we are seeing windy conditions out there, and that's going to last for tomorrow. Probably makes doing any kind of activity outside a little bit more difficult. Maybe riding a bike is a little bit more difficult as well. But tomorrow, we will notice those breezy conditions kick up once again and last with us through the day. We're not dealing with the rainfall right now, though. Earlier today, we did see a little bit of rain push through, but it was only some light stuff. The majority of the rainfall is going to be focused off to our north, but we will see some more storms head this way by the time we head into the end of our work week. And the reason for that is because we have a new system that's off to our west that's currently progressing this way. And this is going to kick up some stronger storms and those strong storms will make an entrance into the Ozark. So we are talking about some heavy rainfall, possibly some damaging winds and some hail even likely on Thursday night into Friday. Now right now we do not have that rain and we're not expecting to see it for the majority of our evening as we had through 
through the day tomorrow. Maybe you're heading out the door early for work. Rain shouldn't be a bother to you. And even tomorrow in the afternoon, we'll notice some peaks of sunshine. Now, tomorrow is actually going to be the driest day of the next couple of days. By the time we head into Thursday, the rain chances kick up a little bit for us, and we could see some heavier rain at times. It's looking like the majority of the rain is going to be coming through on Thursday evening. But for tonight, we're just talking about some warm stuff out there. 68 degrees is that expected low, and tomorrow it's getting warm once again. Winds up to 20 miles per hour and gusts up to 30 miles per hour. High temperature is expected to top out at 84 degrees. More muggy weather on the way as well. We'll notice the warmth for the majority of our work week, but stormy weather comes into play on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. A cold front's coming through, sweeping us out, and then on Sunday, we'll notice it pass, and the skies get a little bit sunnier for us. By the time we head into Monday, we're talking about some slightly cooler temperatures. We'll have our lows bottom out in the upper 50s, which is about 10 degrees cooler than cool. what we're seeing currently. So a little bit cooler to start next work week. Until then, warm, muggy, mm -hmm. and even This is what gray. we like to call the air you can wear. Yes, <laughs> the air you, you can, can wear. wear it tomorrow once again. It will be dripping right. off of you. Mm -hmm. nice. It will be. Well, the wind will blow the sweat away. Don't worry. There okay. we go. Got good, good point. Thanks, mm -hmm. Lindsay. <laughs> hit down the right field line. This ball is deep, and this ball is gone. The St. Louis Cardinals muscled up on the Royals in the I-70 series. Dan Lucy is coming up for sports with the highlights from the K, plus state baseball from O'Fallon. It's all next.
now, the Chevy Dealer Sports Report with Dan Lucy. The I-70 series continuing tonight in Kansas City. Royals just reeling, going into the action. Losers of six in a row. Meanwhile, the Cardinals going in the opposite direction. The Cardinals have won five of their last six. They're 33 wins, the most of any team in the big leagues. And St. Louis has a one-and-a-half game lead on the Reds in the Central going into the action. Royals fans rubbing in the 85 World now Series to the Cardinal fans. St. Louis jumps out in front first inning. Carlos Beltran well, drives this one deep to right. It stays fair, and it's gone. A two-run home run to make it 2-0 Cardinals. Kansas City would cut that lead in half in the bottom half. Billy Butler shoots the gap in left center. Alex Gordon rounds third and comes in to score to make it a 2-1 game. That is Butler's 1,000th career hit. Tip of the cap. Stay that way into the sixth inning. Matt Carpenter launches this rocket to right. It would go over the bullpen and gone. A solo shot to make it 3-1. And then one batter later, Matt Holliday goes deep to center over the Budweiser sign. That makes it 4-1. Tyler Lyons went seven innings, giving up just two hits. He gets the 4-1 victory. So the Cardinals are now 34-17. This series moves to St. Louis for the next two games. And the Cardinals finally decided that they couldn't wait any longer today, saying that 21-year-old right-handed pitcher Michael Waka will join the big league rotation and start Thursday in St. Louis. The Cardinals have put Jaime Garcia, Jake Westbrook, and John Gast on the disabled list. Waka will make his debut less, just a little bit more than a year from graduating from Texas A&M. He pitched in Springfield for all of four games last season. He was 4-0 in Memphis this year. Meanwhile, Carlos Martinez is being sent back to AAA Memphis, where he will be turned back into a starter. Mike Matheny says he learned a lot out of the bullpen in St. Louis. I'm a big fan of every time we get guys here, we get a, an opportunity for them to see the professionalism of the, the, the stars, especially you know, the work they put in. He was paying close attention. I think it's also good for him to see, you know, coming straight out of Double A, that, that his stuff plays at this level and he can get guys from the big leagues out. Speaking of the AA Cardinals, Springfield lost its sixth straight game tonight down in Frisco, Texas. Adam Melker belted a pair of home runs, and that the second one gave Springfield the lead late in the game, but Frisco would rally on the Cards' bullpen and wins 6-5. to five. Well, after a day and a half of rain, the 2013 Missouri State High School Baseball Championships are underway in O'Fallon. In Class 1, Dadeville squaring off with the defending state champion Santa Fe Chiefs, and it was a 3-2 Santa Fe lead in the fourth inning when Dadeville would rally. Austin Neely would single to left. Christian Long comes in to score, and it was a 3-3 three three game. And then Will Sappington would single to right. Dadeville's Sam Goodman comes in to score, and it was a 4-3 Bearcat lead. But Santa Fe would bounce back in the bottom half. The Dadeville catcher with a bad throw to third, the error allowing Ben Hines to come in to score, and the Chiefs were up 5-4. And then Andrew Curry would double to center, Chad Tymon comes in to score, and it was a 6-4 Santa Fe lead. Later, Wyatt Wilkerson would single to left, and Hines and Christian Bowman both come in to score here to make it 8-4. Santa Fe beats Dadeville 11-4. The Bearcats play Sturgeon tomorrow for third place. The 15th-ranked Arkansas Razorbacks will continue their baseball season in the NCAA tournament's Manhattan, Kansas Regional. In our Razorback Nation report, Arkansas, the second seed, will face the third seed, Bryant, on Friday night. The other pairing has the top seed, Kansas State, against fourth-seeded Wichita State. This will be the 26th time that Arkansas has made it to the NCAA tournament, and the Razorbacks are one of only seven teams that has made it in 12 straight years. Arkansas lost to LSU in the semis of the SEC tournament over the weekend. The Hogs have won 37 games. They boasted the best pitching rotation in Division I, but was sent on the road by the NCAAs. So we played well enough to host, so we, uh, we feel like we're going to go out to Manhattan and play the chip on our shoulder. We just like the underdogs like we kind of all are here. And we know people always look at us as kind of the back porch guys. I mean, no one ever sees us, no one ever talks about us. Uh, you know, they don't expect much from us. Well, yeah, I'd say we have a chip on our shoulder. And that's the way it goes, and I know that, uh, you know, our focus right now is just uh, find out as much as we can about Bryant. What we can tell you is that Brian is out of Rhode Island, so yeah, not, 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 the, not the college down on Republic right, right, Road. Right. Uh, also, state baseball up in O'Fallon. Everything's been moved back a day because of the rain up there. Hartville will play in a Class 2 semi tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. Catholic's still up there, Rogersville up there, and Willard up there as well, so good luck to all those teams. Be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Dan. And hopefully the weather will cooperate for them. We'll have a last check of the forecast when we come back.
Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. News will continue in a moment. Singers in Russia, you're listening to the singers ranged in age and experience and set out to break a world record for the largest choir. The performance was in honor of St. Petersburg three, 310th anniversary. Those singers were accompanied by 90 orchestra musicians from St. Petersburg Chapel. Now, unfortunately, it did rain during the event, but that didn't stop thousands of onlookers from listening and even singing along to 15 patriotic songs for more than an hour. Well, some rain there in Russia. Beautiful music, though. We had some rain this morning. Just a lot of muggy air tonight, Lindsay. Lots of muggy air, and uh, yeah, more rain is going to be coming at the end of our work week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know, Dan, you were asking me if you could mow your lawn right. on Thursday. Thursday. Can you do it tomorrow? No, I need to do it in the morning on Thursday. Dan, Dan, oh, okay. Let's just put it out there. Dan is a creature of habit. If you have a certain day of the week, I'm quite That's sure. Really? Well, right. Oh, my. In, in honor of the weather, I recommend doing it tomorrow <laughs> instead of Thursday. You're gonna have to, I, I, your choice. Right. <laughs> it's going to get them all discombobulated That's now. Right. Okay. Okay. You can still walk the dog tomorrow. I'll run with the dog. Yeah. Run with the dog. That's Ooh, right. Good night. <laughs>